Hi, I'm Chris Ward, Senior Applications Engineer with Fenner. Fenner is a market leader in polyurethane belting, with a focus on motion control and power transmission. Over the last 30 years, we have developed a portfolio of belts where longevity, quality and accuracy are critical to our customers. Recently, Fenner launched an Eagle Poly V-Belt. This Poly V-Belt is constructed from nylon reinforcements with a polyurethane binder, where the industry norm seems to be a rubber over nylon reinforcement. We frequently get asked, why do Eagle Poly V-Belts feel so different to what's available in the marketplace today? This comes from the development of the product, really. We said to ourselves, bring some competitor products in, let's test them, and if we're going to launch a product, it has to exceed the capabilities of what that product can do today. The materials we use are different to what comes in the marketplace. Although the reinforcements are similar, they're nylon, we bind out everything together using a polyurethane, where the industry standard is actually a rubber. The polyurethane we use is stiffer than the rubber alternative, so that just logically in makes the product feel stiffer when you feel it in your hand. That doesn't have any negative connotations to the product itself. Eagle Poly V-Belts have a higher coefficient of friction than the rubber alternatives out there. The coefficient of friction of the polyurethane we use is 0.63 as opposed to a 0.04 for the rubber. What does that mean? That means we can produce the same amount of torque or load carrying capability with less tension. What are the other benefits? The material is harder than the rubber alternatives out there. In fact, that hard, the additional hardness gives us 33% less abrasion in testing. What does that mean? That means with the less tension, less flexural stress in the belt, and the additional abrasion resistance, the longevity of our product is going to certainly outlast what the rubber poly V-belts offer you today. Can Eagle Poly V-belt be used in highly sensitive areas like food and beverage or pharmaceutical? Sure, although not FDA compliant, we know from testing, because of our higher coefficient of friction, our product dusts significantly less than what's available from any rubber products offering today. That's why it's the preferred choice in this industry. How do I know that Eagle Poly V-Belt will give me the result that I'm looking for? Obviously, before we launched this product, we did some significant in-house testing, both dynamically and statically. Real proof of the pudding is when you put it out into industry. What we decided to do was partner with one of the world leaders in the logistics industry, where they did a four-month test comparing Eagle Poly V's to rubber alternative. During this four-month time frame, 317 rubber poly V-belts needed to be replaced. In the same time frame, zero Eagle Poly V-belts were replaced. This not only saves money in the actual replacement of the product, but through lost downtime and lost production in changing over the belts. The product was checked on a weekly basis and there were no visible changes to the product and no visible signs of wear. This is just one isolated test, but we are seeing that as the product progresses, we're getting similar results throughout the industry. How do I know what belt length I need? I get confused with all the different variations out there. Our product is the length that is designated on the list of belts. And the reason why I hesitant in the way I say it that way is if we make a 254, our belt is designed to fit a 254 application. Don't mean to say that the belt will be exactly 254 millimeters long, but it is designed specifically for that application. And the reason why I'm emphasizing that is our approach is very, very logical that it's the right length for the right application. And, and we say as such. However, in the industry, the, a competitor has a product that is designated as a 316, but its actual length is a 326. 
Don't ask me why, can't answer any questions to that. The problem, the confusion comes in that you come to us, you've been buying a 316 for the last couple of years, you come to us and ask for a 316, and all of a sudden we're offering you a 326. The reason for that is, again, is that 316 is actually 326 long. Ours is 326. So to some purchasing guy or to some quality guy, when the product comes through the door, they're gonna believe that we've sent a belt that's way too long for the application. Remember that all of our numbering, the belt is that the correct length, and it's not particularly the case for what you've been buying in the past. Another little slight difference. In some of our previous questions that we've answered, we've said that our product can go on with less tension to give you the same result as a competitor's product. So there may be an instance where you buy a 290 existing from a competitor, and when we look at the application, we can offer you a 292. That would be two millimeters longer that means there's less tension in the belt. But remember, because of our higher coefficient of friction, that means that we can produce the same amount of torque or load carrying capability as that 290 that you've been buying from somebody else. Another question that we get from customers pertains to calves. They have seen that poly V belts aren't particularly great on calves. And how is Eagle any different from what else is available in the marketplace? So, let's talk about the application itself. So when we talk about calves, the inclusive angle or the industry norm for an inclusive angle is about 10 degrees. Um, we're finding that our competitors claim that their product works satisfactorily up to five degrees. We've actually tested ours up to 10 degrees and we believe that our product works satisfactorily at that 10 degrees. Now, when we drop it back to five degrees and we compare it to what's available in the marketplace today, we run significantly longer with significantly less wear than what our competitors show. There's a couple of reasons for that, and as we've talked about in other videos. Our material is a little bit harder, so our abrasion resistance is a little bit better, and the entry exit, uh, the angle can be a little bit different and cause a little bit wear on the actual belt itself. But with our product being harder, we see significantly less wear. The second factor is, when we install our belt, it goes on with a lower tension, and that can also help in calves uh, by not putting one side of the belt under more stress than the other side of the belt. So all in all, 10 degree inclusive angle, we're okay with that, and at five degrees that some of our competitors offer, we're significantly better. Another question pertains to installation. The question comes across is that the head, the Eagle Poly V, is extremely hard to install. And is that true? Installation wise, the forces that's required to install it should be similar to what they're doing today. In fact, if anything, if we've watched some of the other videos, it may go on with slight left tension. Remember, Eagle Poly V has a higher coefficient of friction, which means we don't have to put our product on with as much tension as our competitors to give you the same load or torque carrying capabilities. So you may even find that when you install our product, it actually goes on with less tension. That's not only good for the belt, but it's also good for the bearings in the system as well. Thank you for watching our series of Eagle Poly V videos. Hopefully I've answered most of the questions that you have. If I haven't, please feel free to reach out to us and we would be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have.